Hey guys, welcome to another episode of The Vinyl Den, your channel for record collecting by record collectors. I'm Nick. It's Tuesday, time to talk about some new releases coming out this Friday, July 19th. There's about 450 albums coming out this week. I got 13 on my list for today. A bunch of links down below you got links for the vinyl den facebook group for the merch page for the spotify and apple music playlist that i put together every week and the patreon page so make sure you check all that out like always if you enjoyed the episode make sure you give me all thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below and make sure you hit that notification bell so you're notified every time i release new episodes like i said in the intro there's about 450 albums coming out this week i'm only going to talk about 13 on the show though today so if there's something i don't talk about make sure you drop me a comment down below let me know what you're looking forward to grabbing this week. And like always, if you're unable to find these in your local brick and mortar stores, they should all be available online. I'll put links down below in the comment section. The first release this week is one that I haven't really heard anything about. Maybe it's because it's all uh, live material. But this is Dio, the Complete Donington Collection. It's a new 5LP box set that they're releasing. It's going to run you about 93 bucks online. So what this box set includes, you get, you're getting the Donington performance from 83 and the Donington performance from 87. Both are split up over two LPs. The, 80, the 87 performance has a D-side etching. I know this was previously released as a 2LP release. I think that 2LP release had the same track listing for 83, but this box set has a lot more material from the 87 show. This also comes with the the fifth LP on here as a picture disc with a track from each one of the uh, the performances. These are two legendary performances from from Dio, and uh, you know, as someone that's gotten more into Dio over the last couple of years, I think really since they reissued uh, Mob Rules and Heaven Hell from Black Sabbath, I think that's when I started getting more into the Dio stuff, and I picked up Holy, Holy Diver and some of the other stuff that they've done over the years. So this is an album, or this is a box set that if I can get it for a little bit less than that, even though I think 93 bucks for a 5LP set is actually not a bad price, but if I can get it a little bit cheaper, I'll, I'll probably get, uh, grab a copy of that. And then you got the new album from Deep Purple coming out this week, Equals One. This is their 23rd studio album. 2LP release is going to be on Purple Vinyl. It's going to run you about 40 bucks online. This is produced by the legendary Bob Ezra, and I know Bob has produced, I think, the last four Deep Purple albums. To be honest... I didn't really know that, I, I didn't realize that uh, Deep Purple had been really continuously releasing music since they reformed back in 84. I mean, I know they've released music because I've listened to some of the stuff off and on, but, you know, they've been pretty pretty consistent releasing music since then. I think the last album I've listened to, or less full album I've listened to from Deep Purple, I think it was Perfect Stranger back in 84. So, uh, you know, I definitely need to check out the new album this week. I'll kind of dig through and check out some of their other stuff also. There's a couple of great Alicia Keys albums getting reissued this week. The first one is Diary of Alicia Keys, released back in 2003. It was her second studio album. It's a two-LP release. It's going to run you about 43 bucks online. I know her, de her debut album was an even bigger album, but I think this was the album that really cemented her as one of the greats of her generation. Um, you know, it sold a bunch of copies. I think it sold over 5 million copies, hit number one on the Billboard 200. If I Ain't Got You was the massive track off this album. It was actually inspired by uh, uh, Aaliyah, who had died, I think, this came out in 2003. I think Aaliyah died in 2001. It's a great album to go back through. It's also one that was out of print for quite a few years up until I think it was last year it finally got reissued. So if you didn't grab a copy of it last year, grab a copy of it now. It's one I'll probably grab this week. You know, 43 bucks is a little pricey for me. If I can get around, you know, 35 to $38, I'll probably get a, a copy of it. And then the second album of, her, of hers that's getting reissued is Girl on Fire. Released back in 2012, it was her fifth studio album. It's a 2LP release. It's going to run you about 39 bucks online. This also sold a bunch. Of, you know, hit number one on the Billboard 200, sold over a million copies. This is a little bit more of an experimental album for Alicia, though. There's some rock elements on here. There's some hip-hop on here. There's some reggae on this album also. Really kind of an interesting listen to go, to go through this album. You know, if all you know is just her first couple of albums, this is a really cool one to check out. There's two great looking jazz releases coming out this week, both part of the Blue Note Classic series, which, so the Classic series compared to the Tone Poet series, Tone Poet series tends to rely on some bigger releases, you know, they're also a little bit nicer packaging, they're also a lot more money too, but, uh, you know, the Classic series releases tend to pull out some of the stuff that I've never heard of before, you know, albums I've never heard of, or musicians I've never heard of before, they're going to run you about, both going to be about 28 bucks online. I'm looking forward to both of these releases. The first one is Cliff Jordan, Cliff Craft, released back in 1958. So I've not, I know I've listened to Cliff before because he was on My Conception by Sonny Clark, which is one of my favorite jazz albums of all time. He does an unbelievable job on that album. And really because of his performance on that album, 
makes me want to grab this one this week. I might grab this one without even streaming at first. He's joined on here by Art Farmer, George Tucker, Lewis Hayes. Should be a really good release. And then the second one is Thad Jones, Magnificent Thad Jones, released in 1956. So Thad really broke into the scene earlier that year in 56 when he released Detroit, New York Junction, which is really regarded as a great album. But looking at the reviews of this one, this one's kind of held up in even better regard than that album that came out before it. You know, he's got a, a fantastic lineup on this one. He's got Billy Mitchell, Barry Harris, Percy Heath, Ma Max Roach. Was Ma Max is one of the great drummers, uh, jazz drummers of the of the 60s, in my opinion. So this is a really cool release. Also, I'm going to grab both of, these, both of them this week. The next album is one that I love, and this is one that's really grown on me over the years because I wasn't a huge fan of this album when it first came out, but uh, you know, I already have it in the box set, so I won't have to grab a copy of it this week. But this is the Rolling Stones, Rolling Stones number two, released in 1965. It was their second UK studio album because remember that back in the early part of their career, they would do UK releases, they would do US releases, sometimes with different track listings on them. This one's going to run you about 26 bucks online. I think this is the album where the Rolling Stones kind of start putting it all together. This is the one where Keith and, and, and Mick start working on their own stuff. I think there's three tracks, three original tracks from the band on this album. Of course, the rest of it are all covers. They did a lot of covers earlier in their in their career, but this is a great album. Like I said, it took me a while to get into this album, though, because I don't know why. When I was younger, you know, I was a bigger fan of like the late 60s and early 70s stuff. It was really kind of the only period of the Rolling Stones I would ever listen to. If it was going to be like early 60s stuff, I think I'd listen to more Beatles stuff. Than, uh, than than the Rolling Stones, but the more I started listening to their stuff, the more like the early part of their career I absolutely love. Um, you know, so like I said, I've already already gotten the box set, so I don't have to grab a copy of it this week. And then the uh, the next release is a Day to Remember Homesick. This was released back in uh, 2009. It was their third studio album, 15th anniversary release. It's going to be a two LP release. It's going to run you about 38 bucks online. There's a black version of this. There's a purple version of this. I think there's also a splatter version on their website. There's a clear version. There's a couple different versions of this album. Um, this is the band's most popular album. I think it hit what uh, the set number 21 on the Billboard 200, which is a lot for a metalcore album. If you're a, a fan of newer metal, if you're a fan of metalcore, you haven't listened to this album, it's a definitely a cool one to check out. And the last five albums on my list this week are all the first five albums from Duran Duran. They're all going to run about 24 bucks online. The first one is their self-titled debut album from 1981. You know, it's an album that I think is probably one of the most influential new wave albums over the early part of the 80s. Of course, Girls on Film was a big track that really pushed the album out there, but I think there's other great tracks on this album that kind of get lost because of the strength of that one. But uh, so you, this is a remaster or reissue of the 2010 remaster. It's a one LP release, so I know the last two times that this album was reissued. I think it was 2020 and 2022. Both times it was reissued as a two LP release. Came with some uh, additional material, which, you know, if you want to check out the, the additional material, I think it's available on streaming. But if not, you can grab a copy of the 2LP release on Discogs for like 35 or 38 bucks, Or you got this uh, $24 one that's coming out this week. So that, you got that coming out. And then the second album is Rio, which was released in 1982. It was their second studio album. Probably their best known album. Of course, you know, Hungry Like the Wolf was the big track on here. You know, sold a bunch also. This hit number six on the Billboard 200. Sold over 2 million copies here in the U.S. Uh, this is the reissue of the 2009 uh, remaster. Same thing, though. The last the last time this album got reissued, which was, it was a long time ago. I think it was 2014 when this got reissued last. And that was a 2LP release that came with bonus material. Same thing. It's, it's available if you want to grab a copy of that off of Discogs. The next album to get reissued by Duran Duran this week is Seven and the Ragged Tiger. Released back in 1983, it was their third studio album. This is the band's last album of all the original uh, band members until 2004. Um, it's one that was met with a lot of really mixed reviews, but it still sold really well. It's the band's only number one album in the UK. Hit number eight, I think, on the Billboard 200 here in the US. There was a lot of turmoil in the band. There was a lot, you know, during the recording process, it was really kind of hard on them. I think it was really the first time in, in their in their career that they had had issues in the recording studio i don't think it really impacted the album though i still really enjoy this album even though it was met with a lot of really uh, bad reviews um you know it's the last band it's the last album from the band i remember sitting down and fully listening to after it was uh, after it was released it's been a long time since i listened to it though it's you know probably been at least 25 years since i've listened to this album so it's definitely one i'll i'll uh, listen to this week and check out and then the next album is Notorious, released in 1986. It was their fourth studio album. This is the band's first album as a three-piece. Um, you know, it's it's different because the band bring, brought in Nile Rodgers to, to produce this one. 
from what I remember listening to this album, it's got this really strong, like, uh, almost like a funk rock sound to it. It's different. It's very different than the earlier stuff. And I think that that different sound is what kind of maybe turned me off from this album. I think I only listened to maybe like the first half of it and kind of gave up after that. But it's another one that I haven't listened to in a long time. And I'll, uh, I'll listen to it again this week. By the way, this is a reissue of the 2010 remaster of this one. And then the last album on the list is Big Thing, released in 1988. It was their fifth studio album. So... From the start, from the release of their first album in 81 until 88, you know, rock music had really changed. And I think at this point, Duran Duran was really kind of trying to figure out where to go with their music. And, you know, this one's, a, this is a very strong electronic album from what I remember listening to. I think I only made it through the first several songs before giving up on the album. Um, you know, in I, you know, Duran Duran always had some electronic in their music. But I think it was a little bit over the top on this album and maybe that kind of helped hurt the uh, the album overall it still sold really well so it hit uh, number 24 on the billboard 200 which you know is still a, a pretty good ranking for for a duran duran album in uh, 1988 but uh you know all th- those last three albums i know for sure i'll probably grab the first two duran duran albums but those last three i'll definitely need to kind of go back through and dig through them again this week well that's all i got for you guys thanks for checking the show out make sure you drop me a comment down below let me know what you're looking forward to grabbing this week some some interesting stuff coming out you know i've got a lot of question marks on here i'll, I'll stream the new purple the new uh, deep purple album i might grab uh, one of those leisha keys albums i'll probably grab both of those jazz albums kind of dig back through the those duran duran albums and see what i want to grab because like i said 24 bucks for rio i don't think is a is a bad price so we'll see what i end up grabbing this week but let me know what you guys think like always if you enjoyed the episode make sure you give me a thumbs up hit that subscribe button down below that's all i got until next time keep on spinning peace peace